I'm breathing underwater, I'm weightless through space. I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I got to do is breathe underwater. In an underwater research facility, two scientists are doing science. We've proven every single facet of your research. The biochemistry works. A sequence of drugs and injections have done exactly as we planned. My blood pressure is lower. My skin is conditioned to constant immersion in water. Based on the title of the episode and what he just described, I'm pretty sure they're turning him into a frog. My eyes have become adapted to seeing in much less light. Yes. So far, the theories have worked out, but... Well... Those are artificial gills. He can literally breathe water with them. I have every faith in your surgery. What you're saying is, why don't I have faith? Why don't I have the same confidence that you have that what we're doing is right and good? Yes, sir, that's exactly what I'm saying. Perhaps we've tried to do too much too soon. Three months we've been working and living here at the bottom of the sea. It's been three months of magnificent achievement. He wants to double check some figures, some blood chemistry, you know, sciencey stuff. Dr. Jenkins would rather go play. But modifying him isn't all they've been doing. Get him ready. They've been kidnapping scuba divers, mind frulling them with drugs, and turning them into worker drones who are also modified to live in water. Dr. Jenkins. I thought we decided to stop this. Manpower, Dr. Wilson. We need manpower. Angie, go to your quarters. After all, they're just little people, not important big brains like us. You know the best part about that? The entire educational system of the time, and in fact the one that we still use, is designed to maintain just such a distinction. Why do we make the kids sit in precise rows like clones to get them used to being on an assembly line? Why do we teach them mainly through lecture and make them sit quietly? to get them used to not questioning authority. Why do we make them do busy work? To get them used to the drudgery on the job. It's called the factory model. It is designed from the ground up to create a pool of workers who are used to doing the same thing day in and day out and not asking questions. It's designed to teach people to serve the elite and know their place. If you don't believe me, Google factory model education and brace yourself. Dr. Jenkins is very much into this model with the added wrinkle of taking people against their will and forcing it on them. This is their great and world-changing contribution to humanity, slavery. Hey professors, it's been done. I'll talk about Angie in a moment. Their habitat isn't far from the Seaview's base, and Admiral Nelson is ultimately in charge of the project. So the Seaview is kind of their supply ship, bringing what little they can't produce themselves. Anything special I can bring you besides the regular supplies? Yes, some pepper, if you please. We've been able to synthesize most everything else, but our pepper from kelp doesn't seem to do the job. They can synthesize just about all their food from the sea. But without a good dose of pepper, who wants to eat it? This one was an excellent swimmer. He'll make a fine recruit for us. I can't help feeling we're moving too fast. The combination of these drugs. We've been all over that. On the three months since the operation, I've observed no side effects in my own reactions or in yours. It's the only practical procedure. I hope you're right. Let's put him away. The sea view's here. They have a morgue-like wall of cold chambers where they keep the ones who are in process. Our two doctors are Skip Holmeyer as Dr. Jenkins, and playing Dr. Winslow is Kurt Conway. Conway, not Connors. 
Both were veteran character actors. So far, I really have to commend the casting department. They've been finding the ideal people not only to play the parts, but to look them. Winslow is the typical older scientist. He's seen too much not to be a little cautious, but he's being overpowered by the typical younger zealous scientist with the strong ideas and stronger personality. There is not a single second of interaction between these two that I don't find believable. These are one-shot roles, and somehow these two developed instant chemistry that works perfectly on the screen. When are we going to stop playing games and let Admiral Nelson know what we've already done instead of pleading with him to let us do it sometime in the future? Because I'm not sure of what we've done. Because I don't know what side effects all these chemical and medical changes in the human body will cause. And yet he keeps doing it, and when his people kidnap another diver, he goes along with it. He says, I've seen changes in you and I'm concerned. Jenkins is blowing it all off. You're an amphibian. And I might say I did as expert a job on you as you did on me. Admiral Nelson has refused to let them conduct human tests for all the same reasons that Dr. Winslow is having doubts. But they couldn't wait. They were sure they had all the answers and it was fine to go ahead. And when a swinging hammer like Jenkins meets a down pillow like Winslow, the pillow's objections won't have any influence on the hammer. Crane has arrived. They've prepared a comprehensive report for the Admiral. Well, comprehensive except for certain things they don't want him to know. Yet. We'd like him to go over this, put our tests and figures on the computer. Well, from looking at the two of you, I'd say the whole project of adapting man to life under the sea is completely workable. In our minds, there was never any doubt. After all, life began in the sea. And we know that at one point, Man, as an unborn embryo, had gill slits. Wrong! Human embryos at a certain point have little folds of skin that look like nascent gill slits, but they're just what I said, folds. Parts of them actually become the inner ear, which tells you how important they are for breathing. This idea was still being taught in the 60s, and I know that because I remember reading it in one of my textbooks. I knew it didn't sound right, but I was a preteen and didn't have any idea how to look into it further. Dr. Winslow is correct. Life began in the sea. And the life that eventually led to us climbed out. That's a big step in the process that he seems to be overlooking. Crane delivers the pepper and he and Kowalski collect some oxygen cylinders. Every so often they bring new ones to replenish the oxygen the men use. I'm a little surprised they haven't found a way to extract oxygen from the sea, but with those gill things, they don't really need to. Crane is telling the Admiral what he observed about the two men. They seem different. It's subtle, but I see a sort of shift in character and personality. I figured it was because the two of them were alone down there for so long, getting on each other's nerves. Or they may have started running tests of the drug therapy on themselves. He says this whole report is a plea to let them start working on Jenkins. And things are getting even more questionable. Admiral, the oxygen tanks we brought out from the XP-1, they're not empty. Only 80% of the oxygen was consumed. 80% of the expected consumption? That's right, the lab confirmed it. Well, that's impossible. Thanks, Jim. They aren't using as much oxygen as usual. Between that and this report, the captain needs to head back out there and ask some questions. And that's not all. The authorities were here this morning. They said with all the publicity the XP-1 project has got, they had to ask if there was any connection between those and Dr. Winslow. But these are articles about missing scuba divers. That's right, four men, one woman. But people lose their lives scuba diving? Yes, but they don't usually vanish without a trace. It's very rare for a diver's body not to be found. These were all within the past few months. Along the shoreline here. In other words, right around the area where the XP-1 is. Coincidence? Let's go find out. All rigged for diving. Take it down to 200 feet. Course 235. Whole course at dead slow. I want to see if we can get the XP-1 under observation without their spotting us on their sonar. Now look, there's a heavy rock formation right here. It might just interfere with their ranging ability. That's nautical talk for we'll hide behind a rock and peek out at them. Ship. It's a girl. A 
free swimmer at 200 feet. It wouldn't be the first time she was at that depth. We're looking at world-famous, award-winning underwater photographer Zale Perry. She grew up swimming and learned to dive early. She got her hands on a waterproof camera and never looked back. She also liked to push the envelope a little, and in 1954 set a women's depth record of 209 feet. She would have gone deeper, but there was no deeper. The bottom was at 209 feet, and she neglected to bring a shovel. She and her S.O. Perry Bivens built and marketed the first hyperbaric chamber designed for civilian use in the U.S. She did several roles like this one where she put her underwater skills to work bringing a story to life. In 1957, she helped create the International Underwater Film Festival, which ran for 17 years. Listing her awards would take half a day. And that rock is doing a good job of hiding the sea view. She hasn't spotted them. That's incredible. Look, look. On her neck. Some kind of metal attachments. Artificial gills. I can only think of one reason why I would want some of those. Because I love scuba diving and it would be fun to stay down there longer. Dr. Winslow has gone ahead. He's made his amphibian. He started creating his monsters. As monsters go, that's one of the more appealing ones I've seen. Crane posts a couple of guards near the rock formation to keep an eye on the XP-1. Uh, why? You can see it just fine from your hiding place here. Why do you need to send guys out? We've just out of the rock formation. We're on a sonar fix. The XP-1. They know you're there, so there's not much point in leaving those divers out there, is there? Call them back. Sparks, put me through to the XP-1. It has to be the sea view. Those two small moving objects. From the sea view. Divers. Moving objects? Even from here, without full screening it, I can see their bubbles and everything else. Dr. Jenkins said these treatments have changed his eyes, and that may not be a good thing. This is the XP-1. Uh, Dr. Winslow, this is Crane. Yes, Commander. Admiral Nelson asked me to come out again. Why? Well, he's concerned about the gas chemistry of the XP-1. Your oxygen use was 20% below the expected consumption. Really? Yes, I'd like to come over and take some tests. Of course. They don't dare tell him no, but they still don't suspect what he knows. And if it sounds like the crew is fixing something, that could account for the two divers outside. If they were anywhere near the sub, which they aren't. The electrolysis unit is ready to put into operation. Of course. Now, the reason you didn't tell Crane on the radio was because I hadn't told you that it was functioning. You'll be satisfied and go away. Explain that they've been making a bit of their own oxygen and didn't need what was in the cylinders, and that should satisfy him. And if he doesn't... If we keep everybody out of sight. Suppose he decides to search the XP-1. We can't permit that. We've manufactured enough plastic explosives to destroy the Sea View. But the men and the crew, they'll be killed. We'll save as many as we can for recruits. Dr. Winslow was concerned that these treatments are changing their brains. How's mass murder for a change of brain, doctor? Recruits is what he calls the people they kidnap and brainwash. It sounds much less offensive than mindless servants. Crane is here and he's buying the oxygen explanation. He still would like to check the place over. Kowalski, check the outer shell thoroughly. Keep a sharp lookout for any leaks. Yes, sir, right away. Why leaks when we've used less oxygen than expected? Well, it's just a precaution. Admiral Nelson wanted us to check anyway. I'm sorry, Commander. That door is locked. All of the rooms of the XP-1 are sealed off. See, we're doing gas mixture experiments. Well, okay then. He invites them to dinner on the sea view and they decline. I'll let you know if we have any leaks. Thank you, Commander. He knows. I swear he knows. Those two men from the Sea View, those guards. When Crane gets back to the Sea View, we'll take them. The good science thing to do would be to come clean, show Admiral Nelson what they've done, and go from there. 
you might conveniently skip over the part about kidnapping divers. And the sea view. If it hasn't left within two hours, we'll destroy it. And when his two men disappear, they think Captain Crane is just going to sit there? This stuff has really monkeyed with their heads. Even supposing they succeed, they have to know destroying the sea view is going to bring the might of the entire U.S. government down on their soggy heads. The treatments are making Dr. Winslow just as headstrong as Jenkins and just as foolish. Gosh. A lady. She leads them all over the place until they get here. They're breathing off air tanks. It's a closed system. Nothing can get into it. So I want to know how that knockout stuff works without breathing it. What do you think? I'd say it's the same girl. Yeah, I think it is too, the girl we saw down here. The free diver. With the gills. That means that Winslow and Jenkins kidnapped her. Come on, put the rest of it together, mind control and all that. And the four missing men divers. We'll have to search the XP-1. Why not lay it on the line to Winslow and Jenkins? We have to be careful, that's why. If those missing people are in the XP-1, if Winslow and Jenkins have been experimenting with them, Chip, we've got to consider their safety first. And how exactly do you propose to do that? These guys have warped their own heads to the point where they're altering people against their will. What do you think they're willing to do to you when you ask too many questions? Carson and Lynch. Oh, what about them? Oh, Davidson and Morley just got to their location. They're not there. Crane and Morton both know what that means, but following protocol is necessary, if only for the men's relative peace of mind. Well, maybe they started back to the sea view. The guards were carrying two-way radios. We can't raise them. Davidson and Morley are looking too, but they report no sign of them. Anything else, sir? Keep trying to get them by radio. And tell Davidson and Morley to get back to the ship. Yes, sir. Let's confront Winslow by radio and see what he has to say for himself. Is Crane trying to contact us? Yes. I'm afraid you were right all along. Two of his men just disappeared. What do you expect him to do? These guys are thoroughly insane. We better finish this off right now. Uh, get the explosive packets and tell Angie to come in here. Unfortunately, insanity plus explosives equals trouble. But Winslow is having doubts about destroying the sub. Maybe there's a shred of basic human decency left in him. Could they be placed so as to disable the sea view? Only disable her? Yes. Fine, fine. Do it that way. With the entire crew as recruits, we'll need the extra living space. And maybe there isn't. He's all in now. Anybody who doesn't bow to their superior ideas will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. There's always somebody who thinks they know best what's right for your life. And there's always a way to tell said somebody to go by the wall. People just have to find it. This is the XP-1. Dr. Winslow, this is Commander Crane. We've been trying to reach you for some time. Lee, look at this. Sorry, Commander. Dr. Jenkins and I were in the middle of some work in the lab. We couldn't come. Captain Crane, heavy electronic interference. Winslow denies doing any experiments that could account for it, but the equipment says the signal is coming from the XP-1. He's hiding something, so get ready to move the boat just in case. Dr. Jenkins outside. They're jamming our sonar. That means trouble. Prepare to get underway. Emergency. Too late. The bombs blow holes in the main ballast tank so they can't surface. They're stuck on the bottom for now. Jenkins says they'll have to join us now. Winslow is still having doubts. 
While you were gone, I made a test on myself. There is a change in the brain. You use the electroencephalograph? There's no question about it. My brain waves are different. Changed. There's no match with previous tests I've made on myself. Well, just what does different mean to you? I don't know. Well, let's see. You were a decent, level-headed scientist. Now you're stealing people's lives from them and turning them into your mindless minions, and you're willing to kill people to keep your secret. You do the math. Aren't we in this a little deep to question it now, Doctor? Yes, but inside of me, in my mind, a voice keeps crying out against this, this violence that we've done, the changes we've made in these people without their consent. Well, you'll excuse me if I don't stand here and shed a tear with you, Doctor, but I have some work to do with the two new recruits in the Sea View. Short version, he's not listening. His mind is made up and your attempt at having some ethics is getting in the way. I wonder how long it'll be before he contemplates eliminating Winslow. You know if this goes on long enough, that's where he'll end up. He doesn't like being around people who question him. Excellent, Angie. you become a very good cook. Shouldn't she get a pat on the head and a cookie, too? Morton took a bad fall in the explosions and is nursing an injured arm. He wants to torpedo the place. I think he forgets that two of their own men are in there. I got the protective screen working. But if we throw every bit of available electrical power into the protective screen, it'll slow up repairs. Without it, the next attack may blow the sea view to bits. Today, the sea view has an electrical grid surrounding it that will electrocute anything that runs into it. Too bad they didn't think of turning it on when all the jamming started. But we can't kill off Angie. Her in a bathing suit is the only reason a third of the audience is watching. Winslow is on the radio. Commander, I'm sure you know now it was a mistake to spy on us. Dr. Admiral Nelson considers you one of the finest scientists in the world. How can a man like you do what you've done? I'd like an opportunity to explain it to you. I'm coming over to the Sea View. Are the two men you captured safe? Quite safe. And if I return safely to the XP-1, they'll remain that way. Come over. Translation, they're hostages. He's coming over to deliver the ultimatum. This is the captain. Get two men outside. Dr. Winslow's coming over to the Sea View. Search him before he's permitted to enter. Remember he said that. Once Winslow was aboard, they turned the electrical grid on. Anything coming within a hundred yards of the Sea View will wish it hadn't. What is that electrical sound? You'll have to ask the captain. Sit down, doctor. We're concerned about that cough. We'd like to check you over. I was <coughs> interested in what use you might have for a high-intensity electrical field somewhere near here. Repair work, doctor. We had quite a job since your visit. Five men injured, some of them severely. We had no intention of hurting anyone. He didn't realize that bombs might hurt someone. Oh, come on. And kidnapping people and wiping their minds doesn't count as hurting them. I learned something today. But we did have the right to protect ourselves. From what? Nobody has threatened them in any way. And since Admiral Nelson got them the funding for this project, he does have a right to find out what's going on. No one has the right to stifle scientific research. That is why we fought you. We must be permitted to carry on the project. Adapt man completely for life in the sea. No, that was never the purpose of the XP-1 project. Yes, yes it was, in my mind. That means he lied to Admiral Nelson from the beginning. That tells us something important about him. He was always like this. He never really had the ethics he claimed. He was perfectly happy to lie and everything else to get what he wanted. And he's wrong. Somebody has to rope in scientific research in certain areas because of stuff like this. He's discovered a way to do this, but his goal is to force it onto everybody, whether we want it or not. That's not science. That's dictatorship. But as I said, that's always been his goal. These treatments just made him more like he already was and removed whatever little conscience he had. We're self-sufficient. We get all our food from the sea. 
synthesize everything we need. All chemicals, all minerals. Where does your electricity come from, Doctor? I would bet my left nostril it's generated on the surface. How about we cut it off and let you figure out how to be self-sufficient that way? They get regular supply runs from the sea view. He's not as self-sufficient as he thinks he is. I mean, come on, they can't even synthesize pepper. Admiral Nelson has checked your figures in the computer again and again. He says your injections change the brain tissue. He lied. To frighten me, to frighten you, so you wouldn't join us. Doctor, we have no interest in joining you. And that's the problem. His mind is so far gone, he can't grasp such a notion. You don't understand. If you did, you'd beg me for the privilege. Oh, if you knew the heavenly freedom of being truly alive in the water, at home, united with the sea. I do, Doctor. I get that feeling every time I dive. But I like my neck and my lungs the way they are. Thank you very much, and keep your creepy paws off me, you aggressive old fart. <coughs> What's going on? What is that? I told you, repairs, Doctor. Your explosive did an enormous amount of damage. If I were he, I'd be more concerned about that cough, but he really thinks this stuff makes him invulnerable. You have just two choices, gentlemen. Either join us voluntarily or we will destroy the sea view and you will become one of us regardless. And there it is. That's not science, so he no longer deserves the title of scientist. He's now a terrorist. Deal with him accordingly. He says, I'm going back to the XP-1, don't try to stop me. You have two hours to decide. Did you notice his reaction to the short circuits? Well, he seemed to get a little dizzy, sort of white. I'm going to work out some figures for that computer. Figures for what? Maybe Dr. Winslow and his amphibians have a weak spot. Ozone. I want to check on it. I'm not going to go into what ozone is, except to say I'm a little puzzled that Dr. Winslow didn't recognize the odor. Ozone doesn't smell like anything else on Earth, and once you identify it, you'll never miss its presence again. As quick as Winslow is beyond the 100-yard limit, they turn the grid back on. What's this? What's Angie going to do? Angie's going to pay the Seaview another visit. But why the scuba gear? Well, their own men wear this. If they see her coming on sonar or on the viewer, they'll think one of their men in the cold room's escaped. But, Doctor, be careful. Both those oxygen tanks are filled with plastic explosives. But I said two hours. I didn't. Sure glad Winslow is the one in charge. There's a lever on that thing by Angie's head. When she pulls it, it starts a timer. She's supposed to pull the lever, drop the tanks near the sub, and get out of there. What if the Sea View has men out? What if they capture her? Angie knows exactly what to do, and she'll obey, won't you, Angie? We don't even have to ask. What will she do? If she's discovered, she'll press the plunger, and no one will know what she's done. But she... she'll be... Yes, Doctor. She's prepared to sacrifice herself for the good of our world. Wrong, Doctor. She is not in control of her faculties or her will, so she's not willing to do anything. You're sending her out as expendable cannon fodder. Winslow will do the most effective thing he can think of to deal with this. He'll sit there and whine for a while. Captain Crane is outside on guard duty. He just cleared the electrical grid, so they're turning it back on. A diamond ship in scuba gear. I have him on the viewer, but one of our men have escaped. He's wearing two tanks, but no bubbles. It's a fake. Keep the electrical field on. And the wetsuit is the color they use on the XP-1, not the sea view. It may be hard for him to see that. Various colors get absorbed the deeper you go, so that by 200 feet, if you don't have a flashlight, everything looks sort of gray, kind of like you're in a black and white TV show. Does Angie understand what she just did and what it's going to do? I don't think so. And Crane doesn't know about the tanks.
I think his idea was to get the tanks off her so she's easier to wrap up and drag back to the sub. But it's considerably easier now she's unconscious. Let's get her to sick bay, put her in restraints, and save her life. She failed. We must disable that ship and drive the men out. We must not let it get away. They must join us. They must see the pure joy, the wisdom. Yeah, well, this time I'll go over and I won't fail. Those two men in the coal room, they'll be due for surgery soon. Well, you do it then. The loss of those two will be minor compared to the loss of the Sea View and its crew. He grabs some more explosives and gets ready to go destroy the Sea View. He doesn't realize that Crane already knows what he's going to do, and they're ready for him. Why? Why do we do this? Will you check the sonar and see if the Sea View people are quiet? Angie was a nice person. She deserved better of us. Not according to Jenkins, she's just a worker bee. It's not as if she's important like he is. While that's been going on, Chip and his crew built some portable ozone generators. Crane and a couple of his men are heading to the XP-1 to use them. Well, if she's dead, it's a small price to pay. If she's captured, we'll rescue her. It's no time for tears, old man. What did I tell you? He's already turning on Winslow. By the time he gets back, he'll be ready to dispose of him, too. So it's a good thing for Winslow that Jenkins won't be coming back. Now to deal with the rest of them. Swimmers, right beneath the XP-1. We won't let them take us to the land. He won't have a choice. Within seconds, the ozone has all of them unconscious. The experiment's over, Dr. Winslow. Dr. Jenkins is dead. I just spoke to Admiral Nelson back at the Institute, and he tells me there's every reason in the world to believe that the biochemical body changes can be reversed, and that the surgery performed can also be handled in a way to restore each of you back to normal. The other three don't have a clue what he just said. They're drones. Winslow doesn't like the idea of being normal again. The most vulnerable man in the world is the man who imagines himself the victor. You, Commander Crane, have just made that mistake. If a single man in this room moves, I shall blow this ship to bits. Well, since you ask so politely, we'll clear your way to the airlock. In you go. Remember when the captain said to search Winslow before they let him on board? Should have done it again. This timer can't be stopped. The bomb will explode in exactly three minutes. Goodbye, Commander Crane. Gentlemen. Winslow should have heeded his own proverb about the man who thinks he's won. Dr. Winslow, I've cut the intake valve. You can't open the hull hatch unless the interior pressure is equalized. He was planning to leave the bomb there, that much is obvious. He wasn't planning to leave himself there with it, and now he can't do a thing about it except wait for all his hopes and intentions to go kaboom. But while Captain Crane couldn't care less if Winslow goes kaboom, he does care about those people trapped in there with Winslow. Oh yeah, and he's not interested in blowing up the ship either. Are you deliberately trying to kill us? Well now, that's a question we could ask you, isn't it? Not at all, Doctor. Open the hatch. No. Release the intake valve and let us go back to the sea. Let us go, we'll all die. And you with us. You can't reason with him, he's out of his mind. Make him open the hatch. Open the hatch, you can still save your lives. They put the grenades against the hatch lever, cover it all with some blast pads, and here goes. They blast the bomb out the tube just in time, and Winslow is defeated. The sea view is safe, and so are his captives. I don't want to know what it's going to take to deprogram them. 
Stopping me won't stop research, gentlemen. All over the world, scientists are trying to work out ways to adapt man to the sea. But not your way. Perhaps not. But the research will go on. It must. Man will need the food the sea can give. And he'll find he must go down into the sea to harvest it. Even in 1965, we already had multiple ways to do that that didn't require installing artificial gills in people against their will and without their consent. What does creating an army of slaves have to do with any of this? He and Jenkins were both willing subjects, but they couldn't be satisfied with that. When you cross that line, you're not a scientist anymore. You're an emperor wannabe. We're more concerned with reversing what you've done to these people. We have to give them back their normal human characteristics. If I'm right, I don't think it can be done. And if I were you, Doctor, I'd start praying that you're wrong. Because either way, those people are going to own you for the rest of your demolished life. Everything you ever owned is now theirs, assuming their minds can be restored. And as for you, I foresee you spending your declining years in a cell. I also foresee you still not grasping what you did wrong, so that cell should probably be padded. About three years into his sentence, he discovered those things on his neck served as receivers and speakers, and he became the prison radio. Inmates found out they could change the station by punching him in the nose. As far as I know, it still works. I'm breathing underwater. I'm weightless through space. I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I gotta do is breathe underwater. Water Film Festival. Festival? She said it. Boom. Getcha. <laughs> Let's confront with. <laughs> Insanity plus explosive. Go oh, good grief, David. Goes long, goes long, long, yeah, yeah. But I like my neck. But I, but I, I, yeah.